Good morning, everyone. I'm Marcia Denneke. I'm the state agronomist. Um, and today for Technology Training Thursday, we are going to go over the steps to um, complete the new 595 um, implementation requirements or job sheet. Okay, so before, before we jump into the job sheet, I wanted to just kind of take you through the steps, you know, of getting ready to, to do the job sheet. So to do that, I'm going to just pull up my PowerPoint here. All right. So let's so let's go through the steps that of the things that we the information we need to collect and and what we need to do so that we can get ready to fill out the job sheet. OK, and so I'm just going to use my farm. Right. So I have I have, you know, a map of my farm. And what I've done is I've, I've, I've you know, done my site visit. I've talked to my producer. I've pulled up some imagery. And the first thing that I've done is I've identified, are there any lost pathways present on 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 this operation? And so I would say um, yes, yes. You know there is because on my on my field I have where my arrows are pointed I have some wetlands and, and you know for sure I have one wetland that's leaving that's leaving my property I also have several conveyances running through my property and those conveyances are also leaving you know leaving my property so I have I have I don't know if you can see my pointer I have one kind of um, you know, in the alfalfa field um, on the on the east side, I have um, another I have some pastures with with some conveyances leaving the site. And so, you know, so I've identified, you know, there is a potential for balloons to leave my farm, you know, either um, through solution or um, adhere to soil particles. So now, we have to evaluate um, my management. Okay, so what is my what am I doing? How how would those how would pollutants either collect, you know, in a water body or leave um, leave the site, right? Um, like through channeling and things, right? And so I just said, you know, I, I don't have a lot of farm ground. Um, so most of my cropland right now is planted to alfalfa, right? So if I think about um, my situation and how pollutants would leave my fields, I think my pollutants are going to leave, you know, in solution rather than adhere to soil particles, right? Now, if I decide to change my rotation and maybe I'm adding, um, some tillage, maybe I'm got, you know, sunflowers. My husband used to plant sunflowers in those fields where the alfalfa is now. You know, I might consider that maybe those lost pathways would include, you know, pesticides or pollutants ad adhered to soil particles, right? So you as the person with job approval authority, you as the planner, are going to look at your individual producer's operation and you're going to make that determination based on what you see. You're going to look at the field. Do you see any real erosion? Do you see any gully erosion? You know, are they doing tillage? Um, how close to water bodies, you know, are they? Is there a buffer in between? You're going to ask yourself those questions and you're going to make that decision, right? Based on your best professional judgment. OK, so so, you know, so our runoff pathways are split into solution and, and absorbed. And then our third pathway that we're going to evaluate is leaching. OK, so in my case, I just pulled up, you know, I just I just went to the field office tech guide to the CNNP folder. I pulled up the PDF for leaching and I looked at it to see if there was you know, high leaching soils anywhere close to my field. And I have a small amount, you know, I'm in the north half of one, 
there's a little bit, but I'm going to say it's not greater than a third. So I'm going to say I don't have a leaching concern. There's a little bit on the Crick Channel in six, but I'm going to say it's not going to make up a third of the field. So again, my primary loss pathway that I'm going to want to evaluate is solution loss. Okay, so I've analyzed my operation, I've looked at the you know the site, and I've made the decision. So that's what I'm I'm going to choose when we get to the job sheet. The other decision that I have to make or decide is what soils when we get ready to run WinPST, what soils do we need to um, evaluate? And so in the guidance that we provided, um, which is located in the field office tech guide, and we have links to it in the instructions, we've said you're going to choose your predominant soils. Now, if you read the tech note, the tech note will say predominant soils are soils that are greater than 10% or greater than 10 acres, right? So we're also going to ask you, we're going to go above and beyond the tech note, and we're going to say, also look at soils that are predominant for your wetlands, right? A lot of states don't have wetland soils, and so not only do your predominant upland soils, but we're going to ask you to look at your predominant wetland or hydraulic, or uh, that isn't the right word. I've been doing uh, the proficiency model all morning. Um, we're going to look at our predominantly um, our, our soils that have some some wetland signatures. OK, and we're going to include those when we're when we're choosing our predominant soils to evaluate. Okay, so we've got we've got some we've got our soils identified. I've identified my loss pathways. Well, okay, why why am I evaluating this in WinPST? Well, um, in my discussions with myself as the producer, I I learned right that I do intend the producer does intend to to apply pesticides, right? So, you know, we're I'm working with my producer. We're discussing our, our options, conservation practices that they're interested in. And in the course of the discussion, you know, I've made some determinations. I've made the determination that there are potential lost pathways present and that my producer or myself, right, intends to apply some chemicals. OK. So that's my trigger to consider running um, WinPST, right? And so because we want to look at what, what is the risk, right? What is the risk? And so I like, I like this little table. Um, you are not required to use it. I like it. So I put it um, in SharePoint um, under, you know, um, uh, Ecological Sciences um, under the Agronomy folder um, and under WinPST. So that you are not required to use it. But the reason I like this is it lets me, if the producer knows what rate they're going to apply for something, it lets you kind of, um, it makes it much easier to decide later on in WinPST if you're looking at the standard rate, if you're looking at um, a low rate. Um, it just it it just helps you and um, know what to choose it when you're running WinPST itself. Okay, so I've identified my my products that I'm going to possibly use, and so I have that information. So now I have everything I need to go ahead and do my WinPST run, right? So the one thing that I am going to remind you is, like I just talked about, is when you do your WinPST run, you want to make sure that if you need to make adjustments in WinPST, that you do that before we export the data. So in, in my case, I'm applying my um, insecticides and herbicides over the top of vegetation, right? So I'm going to choose 
Foliar. Um, I'm also, um, um, you know, when you choose your products, right, um, that shows up, you know, under the products list. You can search for those either by active ingredient or by product name. Um, I've included my soils, so I have all my predominant soils, both my uplands and my wetlands. Now, the one thing I should mention on your predominant soils, right? So I'm, on my field, when I look at my soils, I had Hodic Ethan Prosper, Hodic Prosper Loam, Hodic Dudley Complex, right? In the help document, in the guidance document that we created for you, we said, okay, there's no reason, even though those soils are, are you know, more than 10%, there's no reason to evaluate every one of those because we're going to look at the main component, which is the Hodic and the HODIC um, parameters are the same regardless of which one we pick. So we're only going to choose one. So in my case, I think I chose, you know, the, the HWB, right? And the same for my wetlands. I have bond loam. I have, um, oh, that one is a little different. I have a uh, lane silty clay loam. I have a lane Farnsworth um, complex. Both of those, the primary soil is lane. So I chose the lane soil, right? So that's how I selected my soils. And then I chose, in this case, I chose, you know, the pesticides that I was intending to, um, to use, okay? Although it is kind of dry, if my products might not work. So maybe, you know, maybe I might want to change that and use, you know, maybe I'm going to switch from my Tordon type product and I'm going to maybe use um, 2 for d or grades on later because it's cheaper. And I'll show you in a few minutes how we can handle that when the producer changes their mind and does something different after we've already, you know, done our initial WinPST run. Okay. So that's kind of our background of what we need to, to get done and what we need to do. So we've got our run. We're going to do our report. And our report looks like it always does, right? When we generate our, our WinPST report, we have our, our we're looking for our um, interactions. So like if we, when we print this off in the, for our producers folder, we're going to look at our interactions um, for our soils and the pesticides that we chose. If you choose, you know, preview, you can see it. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're gonna print that off and put that in your folder. Okay, so here's, here's where we're going to do something different, okay? So if, if we're just printing it, you know, we click our interaction button, we hit our print, and, and we're done. But to get ready to import this into our new job sheet, what I want you to do is down here under export. You see the little export button under export? I want you to come down here and I want you to check interaction location. Now, if you don't change the name, right, this is automatically going to send this to, to CWinPST 3.1 Exports Interaction Data. Okay, that's where it's going to send it on your C drive. That's where the, the, the spreadsheet that Mark developed is going to look for it, right? If you don't change that path at all, or you know, add any a name, an additional name to it, every time you run WinPST, it will just overwrite the, the, the previous one, and you know, that's what you'll have on your computer. The last one you ran will be there. If you want to save it so that you can use that again later, give it a unique name. So on mine after interaction data. I've added Denneke Farm, right? So I know that, you know, that's what I called it. You can call it anything you want, okay? What you're going to do, so that gives you the ability to retrieve it again later. What you're going to do is you're going to hit the Excel button and you're going to hit export. And it's gonna tell you export location, that's CWinPST 3.1 exports. And then it has my, my name and we hit okay. So that's as 
easy as that, okay? So this is just, uh, I'll come back to this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna close out of this. And so I've got everything exported and ready to go, okay? So now I'm going to come to my job sheet. And if there's anything up here that we need to turn off, we'll turn that off. Okay. So the, 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 the beginning of the job sheet is just like every other job sheet that we have. There's a place to put the cooperator's name. If you're working with an agronomist or a consultant, um, you can put that in, information in there. Um, you know, your county, your purposes, there's a drop down with all the purposes in the standard, and there's a place to put um, a couple of them. Your track and field. So, um, I think I will just go ahead and demonstrate this portion of the job sheet, and then we'll go back and we'll pick up. Well, maybe let's just, I'll just, I'll just quick come back here. So Mark does an excellent job, an excellent job of spelling everything out in the instruction. So if you go to the instruction tab, he has, he has the instructions in here. And so, we can just click on the instructions. If our, um, if our agronomist has a consultant, it, it is not intended that the consultant will fill out um, the decision-making steps, okay? The consultant is required to do the IPM plan. The producer and the consultant have to work together to do the IPM plan, okay? But deciding, deciding what lost pathways you want to evaluate and helping them select their mitigations, that, that's, that's you guys' responsibility, which, you know, because you have job approval. Now, if you want the consultant to run win PST for you and just give you that export file so that you can just load it into the job sheet, that is fine. So absolutely, the consultant must help the producer do the IPM plan. The consultants can certainly run the win PST evaluation based on, on their soils if you if you trust them to do that based on their soils and their and their um, pesticides used. If you trust them to do that, they absolutely can do that. But you're going to do the evaluation, okay? Okay, so I have the instructions pulled up and mine says there was a problem. So um, it might just be because we're I'm sharing. All right, thank you. Um, so, the, so Mark has all the steps lined up, okay? Um, and, and we're going to go through that you have an option to enter the data in the spreadsheet both manually and, and the way I'm going to show you. So Mark has built a tremendous amount of flexibility into this job sheet. Tremendous. It, it's, it's fantastic, the flexibility that he's given you. Um, hey, Marsha, can you yes? make this a little bigger so we can see it a little easier? Sure. Thank you. Tell me when to stop, please. Not like that. Good? Yeah, that's good. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for letting me know, Eric. All right. So um, so our, our producer or our consultant um, will use SDSU or other science-based um, resources to develop the IPM plan, right? And they're what we just did, they just went through those steps that I just did. They identified their herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides, right? So we determined that we are using pesticides, that we should do a WinPST analysis. Um, 
we, we're going to, we opened our job sheet. We're going to fill out the initial information like every job sheet has. We can enter the crop year. And like it, like I said, the, when, when I opened that job sheet, it opened up to a manual data entry. And we're going to go through those steps in just a minute um, on how to do that. But the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, um, Mark has a number of links in this job sheet. So you're not quite sure how I made that assessment of what, what my risks were that we have a document for you. It's located in the field office tech guide under section four with the, the pest management conservation system standard, but we also have a link to it here in the job sheet, all right? I'm going to show you, um, you know, that we have an optional um, column called mode of action. You're working with a producer who has identified resistance as a concern. And you wanna make sure that you're talking about mode of action. We have a, a link on how to get those mode of action numbers and also a link kind of explaining um, what they are. Give, um, you know, it gives you a little more information about it, okay? We also have um, links to, um, Sorry, am I making you dizzy? Um, um, we have um, I, I don't remember where I was headed with that. Anyway, so there's a number of links in in the instructions themselves in case you get stuck and you need and you need assistance. If you're not sure, you know where to look at it. Everything that I could put in the field office tech guide as a guidance document um, with the standard is there. There's just a couple things um, located in SharePoint um, in the WinPST folder that I can't put in the standard. And one was that that um, sheet to you know fill your put your pesticides on you know if you want to use it. And the other thing is a video on how to use WinPST that Jason did earlier. So those two things are in SharePoint under um, Ecological Sciences, Agronomy, um, WinPST. Everything else is located in the folder right next to the standard, okay? So that's kind of the gist of the instructions. I'm going to go back to, uh, Oh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you the IPM plan, and I'm going to make this the hair smaller. Yeah. All right. Okay. The IPM plan. All right. So I know that if you've been around for a while, you're going to say, Marcia, in the past, we had to do the mitigation stuff first, and then the IPM plan was optional. And now it looks like we have to do the IPM plan, and then we have to decide whether or not we need to work with the producer on mitigation strategies. Why, why, why is it different? What changed? And, and the honest answer, you guys, is that the person at headquarters in charge of this practice is different. And that person made the decision um, based on the fact that when we automatically jump to mitigation, right? The reason we mitigate is that we're mitigating pesticide use. And, and her reasoning for requiring the IPM plan, you know, initially, you know, up front rather than after the fact is that not every producer who is eligible to do pest management uses pesticides. We have a, a number of organic producers who who choose not to use um, pesticides. And, and just, you know, there are a few, I mean, it doesn't completely 
negate having to do with PSG because there are a few organic products that are also located in Win PST, but but essentially, um, you know, the IPM plan. What what you intend to do to manage your pest is first and foremost, and then if the producer is using pesticides and you have identified that there are in fact lost pathways present, then that's when you'd want to have the discussion with them about choosing some mitigation strategies to um, minimize the environmental risk of using those products, okay? So the IPM plan is required. They need to do an IPM plan. They do not necessarily need to do our IPM plan. So this plan is in, in, in the spreadsheet for you as an example, but they do not have to use this one. They can get you know, their IPM plan from their consultant or an extension person, um, or they can try to do it, you know, they can work on it themselves as long as they're using, um, you know, good resources, okay? Um, you guys are not authorized to do the plan for them. Now, I know some of you are very helpful and if it helps you to move things from their plan to this version, so that you have it, you can do that, but you know, please don't write the plan for them, okay? And don't tell them what they have to, you know, put in. What your role is, what you your role is, is to look at the plan that they have given you and determine have they adequately addressed the resource concerns that were identified. And if they've done that, then their plan is acceptable regardless of how elaborate it is, okay? Now, the one thing that um, some of you have asked for is, um, can, we, can we put our target pest in here and have that go to the, the scouting reports? And, and we did that for cropland. Uh, we did not do that for grass. Mark, and I say we, I mean Mark, Mark Washachek, who the ACES employee who developed the spreadsheet for us. Um, so the, the scouting sheets in this, in this spreadsheet are probably not, you know, they're not really intended for your crop consultants. They're more for the producer who has elected to, um, do his own monitoring. All right. So don't, don't tell the crop consultant that they have to use this. That's, that's not the case. And the same for the IPM plan. They, that's not the case. But if you do um, put your weed pest in here, it will, you can send it to, um, to the scouting report, okay? And there's a place for your treatment thresholds. Um, and I know that trying to Google, um, you know, SDSU's website and find those treatment thresholds is not, is not easy. And I'm, I'm hoping as, you know, Extension gets some, you know, they've got some new people on board. I'm hoping we can get them to summarize those things, you know, in a nice document for us instead of having to search those articles. I, I, I know, I, I, I understand. Do the best you can with the treatment thresholds. Just kind of, you know, do an overview to make sure that they look reasonable, okay? All right, so then they have a place they can put their their prevention, avoidance, monitoring, and suppression strategies, right? So they can get all of that stuff included. So that pretty much looks the same as like page one or what page, what used to be page two of the job sheet always does, right? So this is in there. They can use it if they would like. They're not required to. All right. So now let's go back to the actual job sheet themselves, itself, okay? And so what I said is when it opened up, it opened up to manual. And so you see how that, that use manual data entry is checked, okay? So you, you know, even though I just did the WinPST run, you don't want to use that information. You want to do it yourself. You want to make your determination, your hazard rating determination yourself. You absolutely can do that. But I really think that you will like this. 
So what you're going to do, I'm going to scroll up here so you can see, I'm going to select this button that says get new WinPST data. So it's going to that C drive and it's going to find where that was. Okay. And I have a few, but remember the one that I just did was Denneke Farm. So I'm going to choose my farm and I'm going to open that. And it says to bring the WinPST data into the job sheet, you're going to enter the appropriate inner CS identified concerns. Okay. So we just went through how I did that for my operation and my resource concern loss pathway that I identified was solution. Okay. So now it's going to pull in everything that had in, the, in WinPST that had a solution rating, right? Let's say that I, you know, decided, you know, because uh, I had some leaching areas identified on my field, I decided to use desktop or the water quality risk assessment map template on your app drive, or we have instructions to do it in Google. Let's say I pulled one of those things up and I looked at it and went, Oh, Marcia, you're wrong. Uh, you do have leaching on more than a third of the field. I can just select leaching also. OK, so. You know, you can when you click and unclick on these, you know, based on that report that you're using, it will bring them in or take them out. Right. So if you want to look at it and you're not quite sure and you want to pull them all in and look at it, you're, you're welcome to do that. OK, so now. These leaching solution and absorb, those are the risk pathways that we evaluated in WinPST. But there are additional risk pathways in the standard that we could decide to address, and that is drift and pollinators. So if you want to evaluate drift and pollinators, you would just select those, okay? Otherwise, if you're not intending to evaluate those, if those aren't producer identified concerns, you don't need to. Now, the one thing I will just say, you know, be careful with drift. Drift is not off site movement of the chemical that is off label. That's not what we're identifying. We're identifying that the producer possibly has you know, maybe they have a pollinator planting, maybe they have some beehives, you know, there's something that they're trying to protect um, from drifts. So not, not misapplication. That's not what we're identifying there. Okay, so now um, we have some more flexibility built into the spreadsheet for you. Some of you are lumpers, some of you are splitters. We can accommodate you. You can either evaluate all your pesticides listed, right? Or, you know, I have some choices, right? I was thinking about using um, Milestone or Tordon. Well, you know, I use both of those products, but maybe in 2022, I'm, whoops, I gotta click my yes. I'm thinking I'm going to use the Milestone product. OK, and maybe um, I decided I'm going to use Warrior. So I'm going to say those are a yes, right? So if I pick yes and I change only to evaluate. Oh, I need to enter my crop here. Oops. Thanks, Mark, for the reminder. So I've got my crop here. And I'm going to say, yep, I only want to evaluate those two products. The mitigation score that I need to mitigate is identified just for those two products that I selected to that I was using this year, right? And so what this has done, it is pulled that table from WinPST into the job sheet. It has looked at solution because I've identified solution loss as a risk and it's pulled in the highest um, hazard rating for solution. And 
and because that one was the, the highest rating, you know, the, the highest mitigation index level that we needed, that's what's going to show up. So let's say I decided I don't want to do my warrior. That one's pretty high. And maybe I want to do seven instead. Right. So now if I come down and look at my job sheet, the the mitigation index that I need is much lower. OK. So you have flexibility. You can do everything the producer is using or you can use specific pesticides in an in a given year. OK, and then the job sheet will tell you based on the risk pathway you identified what the mitigation points you will need to mitigate for. OK. Now I said it's kind of dry. Maybe I milestone and Tordon are kind of expensive. So I'm going to go back um, and I'm, let's say I want to just evaluate everything. So I'm going to uncheck that one. I'm going to evaluate everything. I don't think I have to change anything. No, my 60 came back. And and now that I've got everything done, my producer has changed their mind, or I have changed my mind, and now I want to add Brazon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to click on the use manual manual entry, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to add. Excuse, I could do it over here. I'm going to do two comma. Or dash B. That's inexpensive. And I I had run, I either run WinPSP or I know from using WinPSP that that is a low rating and that my pathway again is solution. Right? So now 2 for D gets added. The, the other thing that you could say, the other thing that we did is we said, okay. Some of our producers, right? We have, I don't remember, Mark, three, four pages worth of, 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 of reporting area, right? So you can use um, a pretty, you know, our producers with large operations have a number, a number of products and a number of risk pathways to evaluate. And so what we did is we said, OK, we get past three pages and we're not going to import everything that's low or very low. And it and the spreadsheet will tell you when you do that. So if you import something um, that has a lot of data and it will ask you um, or tell you that it it's only going to pull in everything intermediate or above. Right. So in this case, because my 24D is low, I wouldn't necessarily have had to add it. You know, I maybe would have just came down here and put a comment. Producer added, you know, 24D rated low, right? I mean, you you can do enough flexibility however you want it. Put it in your assistant notes, whatever. Um, you know, if it was intermediate or higher, the product I was substituting with, then I would I would probably come back and either handwrite it in or put it or put it in here, OK? So one of the things that you can also do for your producer, if you want, is you can help them with mode of action numbers. Now, I'm old. I usually just go get the SDSU herbicide, you know, the weed guides, and I open it up, and I look for them, and I put them in. But our techie people have um, included this mode of action lookup. and so. If you click on the mode of action lookup, it will take you to the website. And you have a choice. So are we looking for herbicides, diseases, insecticides? What are we looking for? So if I click on insecticides, And I have to kind of scroll down a little bit. And there is an insecticide lookup tool. 
scroll down a little bit. And I type in my warrior two. Right? And it tells me that it's a three. Okay? So I have a short memory. I'm going to put a three. Okay. And then if I come back and I come over here to my weeds and I scroll down, do my herbicide lookup tool. And I come down to my trade name. I find my milestone. Right, so my milestone is a four. Okay, so I can get out of this, come back to my table, and so I know that my milestone was a four, and I'm going to write herbicide because there's enough space, and I'm going to write for my warrior, it was a three. I'm going to write in side, right? Because a four in for um, a herbicide is not the same, you know, they're not the same rating system. They they're each have their own rating, mode of action rating system, okay? So they're not, it's not all the same. So a four in one is not a four in another, right? But that gives you the flexibility to do that for your producer. You know, if you and your producer are are visiting about herbicide or or um, you know pest resistance, right? There's a number of different things besides weeds that are resistant. Okay. Okay. So we've we've done that. So we've we've got our risk. We know what what points we need. So in this case, I need 60 points. And now it's time for me to start thinking about. What are my mitigation strategies going to be? Okay. So, um, this is kind of preloaded, preloaded for cropland, right? But, and, you know, I have alfalfa and grass, doesn't matter. I can just overwrite these and choose the things I want. Okay. So, Monitoring and economic pest holds. Yep, that's probably that's probably something I'm going to do. Now, you know, am I already doing it or is it something I'm planning? Well, maybe maybe I'm not doing it very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and plan to do that. Um, you know, application and timing and rain. You know, I'm pretty good at about not spraying when it's raining. I'm I'm already doing that, and um, so I'm going to give myself. That's something I've already I'm already doing. Um, and when I um, when I was um, running my wind PST right for my herbicides, I said that I was um, I was spot applying. So I'm going to come down here to my mitigations and I'm going to find partial application. And I don't have my glasses on, so partial treatment. Here we go. I'm spot spraying. And I'm saying I'm already doing that. OK, and so you can see that as I'm selecting those mitigations, it's adding up in the bottom of my spreadsheet here, right? Okay, so there was we we had we had some debate about this, but here's how here's how this works. Okay, you know the debate was: Do we add existing and plan together to get a total, or if they're going to move forward? You know, if they're if somebody's already doing them, we're we're you know. For instance, a conservation practice, let's say they're already doing it. We're not going to pay them to do it, you know, again. I mean, they're already doing it, but we want to hold them to that level, right? I mean, they're already doing it. We're not going to pay them to do it. 
but we want to hold them to that level. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and if they're already doing it and we want them to continue doing it, we're going to select it again in the plant. And we're going to use this plan column to generate the points that we need to meet our, our mitigation. Now I have partial treatment selected, right? I'm I'm already spot sprayed my my um, pastures, okay? But the warrior that I need the 60 mitigation points for is on my alfalfa field. I am not going to spot apply um, um, my, for my alfalfa weevils. I'm going to spray the whole field, right? So even though I'm doing that already on my grass, I'm not going to take credit for that um, in my mitigation points because for my, my warrior, for my crop fields, I'm not doing that. So what we've, what we, this is where some of you are lumpers, some of you are splitters. What we've said, right, in our instructions, is we've said that we need to do the job sheet, the assessment for the operation, okay? But, and so we're going to choose things that are applicable to where the risk are associated with, right, for that operation. If somebody's management was significantly enough different that you wanted to split that operation into, you know, a couple different managements and run um, WinPST and do the job sheet separately for those two different managements, you are absolutely welcome to do that, right? Um, if you want to split them apart and do more than one job sheet, you can absolutely do that. So like an example of when I would do that, you know, when I was in Woonsocket, um, I had producers with melon rotations, right, which used a lot of foliar um, fungicides that were very high risk. And then I had, you know, corn soybean rotations that had more Roundup type products included, right? So I split those into two different two different managements and ran them separately because you know one required a very high level of mitigation and the and the rest of the managements you know were more in that intermediate and low range, right? So there, I didn't want to hold them accountable, you know, at the higher level for the whole operation when it didn't it wasn't you know it wasn't necessary it didn't fit, right? And the same with my alfalfa and grass. If I wanted to, I could split those two apart and, and do them separately. But I'm just going to not choose points that aren't applicable to what's causing my, my risk, right? So if I'm doing it. I have it in here that I'm doing it. I'm just not going to select it. So what I'm going to go in and select is I think I you know, and working, you know, working with my producer here, we're going to do um, forage harvest management. My forage harvest management. And so that's a new practice. So I'm going to put that in my conservation plan and I'm going to plan it. I'm going to choose this partial substitution. And I'm going to come down here to that one. It's a strategy rather than a practice. I'm going to choose that. And the reason I'm going to choose that is I, you know, in working with my producer, have decided that um, chemical suppression, right, for my alfalfa weevil is not going to be my first go to. I'm going to first clip, you know, clip my alfalfa. And then I'm going to monitor, right? Monitoring for pest management is required. So I'm going to monitor and then I'm going to determine whether or not I need to come back with that, um, that uh, insecticide application or whether just doing the clipping will suffice. And the same thing, I'm going to do the same kind of process on my, on my thistles, let's say. So I'm going to clip them. And then I'm going to watch the regrowth and determine, you know, if I need to make um, a um, herbicide application. So I'm going to use 
partial substitution. And the other thing that you're going to find is, you know, it's very easy to get your mitigation strategies if you have a high, you know, a high index level needed for cropland. It's much more difficult to get those that those mitigation strategies if you're doing um, like a perennial vegetation or 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 grasses. OK, and so you got to kind of really think about that. And so you can see I'm at 55 points. I, I'm not making it, so my options are, you know, Marcia, you can either, you know, find a, a different product that isn't quite as high, or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we can just make sure that we um, buffer those wetland and, and drainage areas. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose um, filter strip. So I'm going to make sure that I have a filter strip and and maybe, you know, I don't want to give up, you know, too much. And it's already perennial vegetation. I'm actually going to say that I probably have it. Um, and maybe I'm just going to say and give my say that that's existing. I'm not going to plan plan it. I've already it's already with my alfalfa and my grass. My my cricks already buffered. I'm going to say that that filter strip is existing. OK, so now I've hit my 60 points. I've, I've got the mitigation that I wanted. OK, so I've got those things that I'm already doing, those things that I'm planned. When I get ready to apply this as the certified planner, I can either come back in here. I'm going to kind of double check and make sure did Marcia use the products that she said she did? Yes or no? Do I need to do anything else? You know, if you need to, you can add additional products to it, just like I did earlier with the 24D. You know, you don't have to come back into here and check the little apply boxes. You can, you can use your pencil, right? It's up to you. Um, the other thing that we can talk about is let's say that I have decided that drift and pollinators is something that I would like to do, right? And so I need to come up here and I need to select them. So once I select them, right? Drift, we always need 20 points for drift. And for um, pollinators, we need an additional, you know, we need 10 points. So for drift, with the mitigations that I've already selected, I've got my 20 points for, for drift, but I have not selected anything that provides me a benefit for pollinators. So I would need to go in and select additional mitigation strategies for, you know, for pollinators, if that was something I truly wanted to address, but you know, it's, um, the other thing that I would show you is, you know, because of space, right? Um, we just, you can select what you want to show up here. So, you know, probably the default and the one that makes the most sense is planned. But let's say you want it, you know, if you wanted to show what was existing, you could do that. Or if you wanted to show what they applied, you could do that. But, you know, for the most part, planned makes the most sense. And then um, if you want to, even though planned is showing up in the boxes, if you want to see what, you know, your scores are for existing plan and applied, you know, based on your mitigations and and what you what you've checked, they will show up down here, you know, in the bottom. You don't want to see that. You can turn it off. So turn it on, you can turn it off. The other thing that I would show you is that Mark is so good about creating little carrots that kind of explain what you, you need to do. So, right, so this carrot, we're gonna select practices or techniques, right, from, from the tech note and the tech note. Um, we've kind of summarized the tech note five and tech note nine in, you know, in a spreadsheet, so everything is pulling from here. Um, 
but those tech, those, and when I say tech note five and tech note nine, I mean national um, agronomy tech note five and tech note nine. Um, because those are national tech notes, we can't put them on the state site under tech notes, but I did put copies of those um, in SharePoint under ecological sciences agronomy. They're just, they're just in there. You can, if you want to access them from there, but we've summarized them in the, in the job sheet here. Um, you know, anytime you're not quite sure, you know, just hover over the carrot and it will kind of give you an explanation of what you're doing, right? And cells are, are uh, you know, so we've got, um, you know, solution identified as a resource concern. That's the highest one that we need mitigation points for, um, like these mitigation points. Let's see, did I choose any that weren't the same? I, oh, I did. Okay, so filter strip, right? So, so you can see that we get less points for for um, a filter strip for solution than we do for absorbed, right? And so this will choose the one that's giving you the lowest points, right? So if solution was my resource concern in my score up here, I'm not getting credit for it being 10 points under absorbed, I'm getting credit for it being five points under solution. And you know, just to kind of remind you what that five points means is that that five points means that it reduces pesticide loss by five to 10%. So if you attempt uh, something that gets a score of 10, reduces pesticide loss by 25%, something that gets a score of 15 reduces pesticide loss by 50%. So you say, well, what if we want to add, what if we want to add more mitigation? And we can do that. We just have to find the research to show that, you know, like scientific, you know, journal articles to show that that, that um, reduction rate is actually occurring. So that's why you don't see a lot of additions to the mitigation strategies. It's just um, a little bit challenging to find the research to, to document, verify that those loss, uh, or let's call it improvements, those improvements are occurring based on different practices and, and strategies, okay? But, you know, if, if, we, if, if there's something that you think um, we need to add, we can, we can certainly look at doing that. Okay, so I think that is a pretty good overview of, of how you finish, um, fill this job sheet out. Um, I can come over here, you know, let's say I'm done with mine, and let's say we want to look at one that's a little more um, complicated. So, you know, we can look at um, get new when PST. It's going to now when you bring in new, it's not going to keep what you've already done. So that's all going to go away. But let's say, you know, I have one here that's a test. And I have to choose my pathways again. And now you can see that this this producer has a lot more products, right? They're using a lot more products. It's a corn bean rotation, I believe me. And maybe wheat. And then we go to page three and they they filled in, right? So it, it sent it, it sent it over to the next page. Go back page one. Um, Right, so I mean, so it's very easy. It's very easy. You know, I think I pulled in the wrong one. I can go back to add when PST data, and I can pick the one I want. To pull it in, right? Just know that once you know, once you've added something manually or what have you, you know, it's all it's going to overwrite what was in there. Okay. So 
I think that is all the steps on how to complete this portion. I think you're going to like that. I I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's, I, I hated having to run one PST and then type everything in again. So I, I hope you like it. I like it. Um, you know, there's a place to put who planned. Remember, we need job approval or, you know, vegetative job approval to, to plan, design, and certify the practice, right? So you can identify who planned it and who certified it. You know, there's a place to put comments. If you want to, you know, if there's something's changed and you want to make a note of it or what have you, you can do that. Like I said, um, we have scouting reports in here for, and I would say these are more for, you know, your, your producer who is maybe trained to, you know, do their own monitoring. Now, the one thing that um, was asked for, and we did, or did, is um, a weed list. So I think I think Eric had a weed list created. And so you can click on that and it will populate. And then I didn't notice it until yesterday, but um, we have a few things uh, spelled wrong. Although some days I feel like this, you know, it should be ragweed instead of rage weed. So you could come over here and edit your weed list. And so I think Wooly should have two L's here. And we come down here to our rage weed and let's, let's get rid of him and make him a rag instead of a rage. And yeah, velvet leaf, I think it's one word. So Next time we'll try and get that fixed and I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, uh, update it in the field of that guide. But so we've changed our changed our weeds here and you can make them be whatever you want. You don't like that list, you can you can make that be list and then let's see. Did it change it? There's something I had to do to get it to change it. I think I just have to edit it first, not put it in there. Okay, there, now fix it. So, you've got your list, you can make that be whatever you want. Um, list pests from IPM plan. So if, you know, if the producer was using the IPM plan and they put their pest in the plan, you can come over here and you can click this button. I don't have anything in it. Um, and it will, it will pull them in. And then you can clear it if you want to start over. So if I go back to my plan and I put and Back to my scout. And now the things that I wrote in there in, in the IPM plan are there, right? So, like I said, this is more geared toward your producers who are trying to do their own rather than your crop consultants. Your crop consultants, they're gonna they're gonna have their own scouting forms. Marsha? Yes. This is Mark. 
say since you are demonstrating, you're doing a really nice job of demonstrating this thing, by the way. And since you're demonstrating this part, I wanted to add that in the 595 job sheet tab, there are formulas in there that use uh, the newer uh, Microsoft Excel formula methods in in Excel 2021. So if you have Office 365, everything works fine. All NRCS offices have that. If you give this to, it wasn't designed really to give to a producer, yeah. but if you do give it to a producer and they start type, they, they may not be able to run anything in the 595 sheet simply because they don't have Office 365. They got an older version of, of Excel or something. And I just wanted to point that out, that this will run in our offices, the 595 part for sure, they will be able to run the IPM plan or, you know, enter stuff in the IPM plan and use those example scouting reports, but they may not be able to uh, even look at what's in the 595 plan because the formulas won't work. So okay. I wanted to point that out. All right, thank, thank you. And I guess in the example that we were given, um, the field office was printing this out and giving it to the producer. So they they made it easier for the producer um, by uh, putting the 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 weeds and pests that they were planning to look for, and then they printed the scouting reports out for their producer um, so that they were sure that they were you know doing it. So like I said, um, you know. Most of your people probably are not going to need this, but you know, we're trying to help you accommodate those producers that need some additional assistance, right? And then, you know, there's an example for um, grass in here if you're scouting pastures or or grazing lands of any kind. Um, and then, um, like I said, we consolidated the the um, tech notes into the spreadsheet. That's what the spreadsheet pulls from. And then this is your data. This is your data um, that's being pulled over from WinPST that's being used in the spreadsheet. Um, now, the one thing I didn't tell you is, let's say that there isn't a hazard rating for a product. You know, sometimes once in a while you'll come across, it will be blank and there won't be a hazard rating. So when you are over here in the job sheet, um, if there isn't, you know, if there's not a hazard rating in that spreadsheet for a particular product, then this just won't populate, okay? So I think I've talked plenty long um, and we've got to give, we've got to give Joyce here um, a chance to, to talk. It, did I, did I forget anything, Mark? Is there anything that I forgot to mention? I, the only thing that I would say is when you do the application, we've added those steps in the instructions at the last page of the instructions oh. where it talks about all four or five things that they need to think through as they uh, apply document the application of the practice at the very last. Well, I think right there it is right there. It is uh, scroll. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's I think scroll up a little bit, Marcia, and I'll show you where I'm talking about and then up just a hair 18, I think is the one you want to look at. If I remember right. Yeah, to complete the form. OK, then there's A, B, C and D. I think those are the things that I was trying to say. Yeah, 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 and and um, I've I've got it. I've got these in a couple spots for you. We've Mark's got them here in the when we sent this out initially, this got missed, and it it, it wasn't in that initial um, example that went out in the email. It's in the version in the field office tech guide, and because um, I wasn't sure how quickly Mark could get it fixed, I also have these. Um, listed for you 
in the documentation requirements. So I have it in a couple places just to kind of help you remember um, kind of what you need to collect from the producer to help you document that they did what they needed to do in order to be able to certify the practice. That, right? That's a good, good point, Marcia, that they, they probably should download the version that's on the internet uh, in the field office tech guide right now, and they'll have the most current version with all this information in there. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Uh -huh. All right. Are there any questions for me? What do you guys have any questions? Is there anything that you didn't understand? Dale, Dale here. I got a quick question. Um, okay. What let's say you have a producer and he, you know, you know he's doing the monitoring the application. He's doing no-till cover crops. It has like a three-four crop rotation. Do you have to go through the whole wind PST when you know he's going to be above, even if sixty, he's going to have an extra high chemical that he's going to do that he's going to meet the PAM so that they're hitting like sixty or sixty-five. Can we just say put a note saying? doing this get run PSA due to this okay so what I'm going to tell you is as of today right now Dale yes you still need to run when PST because policy requires that we run it but um based on you guys' suggestion you know I mean a number of people have asked that question do I need to run when PST if I know my producer, my producer is electing to meet enough mitigation to get 60 points. And we just asked for and got a waiver from the Ecological Science Division to write a tech note, right, that spells out when, when a, you would not need to run WinPST. And so, you know, it has to be um, you know, it has to be the producer's choice, you know, but so that that hasn't. We haven't got the tech note done. We, you know, we weren't going to make we just got we just got approval after the April, you know, um, cutoff date for updating standards and stuff. So. Today for for now, you're going to run when PST. Yeah, um, in in October. When we, you know, when we do the October release, we'll have our tech note done and we'll identify for you those situations where you won't have to run when PST because you know that the producer, the because the producer has elected to do enough mitigation strategies that um, they're going to meet the the 60 point okay so we just have to we have to what we're required to do is to write a tech note lay everything out on what has to happen and what what type of things are eligible you know we're going to we i was told to limit um the mitigation choices right we need to ensure that you know regardless of the lost pathway that we're meeting you know that mitigation and so as soon as we get that done, you know, anticipated with a October 1st, you know, um, time span, then we'll allow you to do that. But I have to get the tech note done first. OK, is that fair? Yeah. OK, so it's coming. Not quite yet. Any other questions? <laughs> 